Today on Shakedown, Mike Spinelli, the creator of the Shakedown concept, will reconnect with those racing roots by joining me on this Shakedown to discuss racing news. And speaking of connecting, I'm dialed into you guys watching Shakedown on Drive. So we will talk DTM Championship. You commented that I ignored the German touring cars, even as the DTM season ended and the championships were crowned. Staying with the news, let's also give you a heads up for the World Endurance Championship racing this weekend, their last race of the year. And of course, F1 is racing too. Yeah, in an earlier show, I said it was F1 in Turkey. Eh, Istanbul, India, hey, it's all the same to an ugly American, right? And I confuse everything with Turkey, like I'm dressing up for Thanksgiving as Gangnam Style Guy because, see, I confuse Turkey with Halloween. Yeah, the jokes are only getting worse. Anyway, F1 in India. And speaking of Red Bull, the US government may be going after them and the other energy drinks for health reasons, like I'm no longer breathing health reasons. But the New Jersey governor wants you to drink the stuff like there's no tomorrow, even if the health thing is kind of real. Because rumor is that Red Bull is coming to save the New Jersey Grand Prix with that green caffeine called cash. Yeah, cash gives everything a boost, wings, whatever. So pound down a few of those Red Bulls to help the New Jersey Grand Prix. And come race day, the crowd may be missing a few hipsters. Hey, but at least we'll have a Grand Prix to enjoy, so thanks, hipsters. Why am I laughing? Because for reasons completely out of my control, Mike Spinelli is here on Shakedown. <laughs> hey, Leo. <laughs> Mikey. Fantastic to see you. Where, where are we, Mikey? I don't know. Are we in the Delta Sky Lounge? Like, what the hell happened here? I feel like I'm waiting for the flight to Turkey to go to the F1 race. No, this is great. This is the new drive set. We've already used it for uh, Road Testament this oh, week. Oh, oh. Road Testament. Right. Yeah. Okay. So this is kind of cool. I mean, it's very uh, retro something. Uh, it's comfortable, too. It's Looks like your high school shop class uh, project. <laughs> yeah. uh, I, I did that on a lathe. Oh, I, I can't even say <laughs> that. So we're going to talk about the racing news. Okay. And, and there's going to end up being maybe a theme through the whole thing. Okay. Well, let's start with World Endurance Championship. Yes. Okay, so last race, they're in Shanghai. Uh, Audi's already won the championship. But Toyota had a win out of Fuji. So, okay, wait a minute. Now, Toyota's running one car. Yes. Now, catch me up on this, because I actually haven't been, been following. So, t Toyota, t well, Toyota's running one car against Audi's 17. Yeah, right? something like, like that. Like one, cars? two, or three, or 17. Yeah. No, no question. And, and turns out, um, you're probably going to be better at this than I am, because I really haven't studied up as much. And what I like when we talk about racing is that you've got the car perspective, but then you have this whole different take on it than... All of these alleged racing experts and stuff. Well, hopefully, yeah, but I mean, the racing nerds are probably going to be frustrated with me. But but oh, bring we'll, it we'll, on. we'll we'll bring yeah, it we'll, on. We'll, we'll so work it out. so you're you're right. I mean, WEC started as a manufacturer's championship only. Mm -hmm. Then it seemed like they morphed into well, we better acknowledge the drivers and the Audi drivers are competing for that last championship. I think McNish and Christensen are like 16 points, 16 and a half points behind. Mm -hmm. But you're right, Audi. The way they do their points is almost like F1. So if you've got multiple cars scoring multiple points, I think then they're gonna win. It feels like a hack. These guys never intended to race. When I point to these guys, I mean Toyota. Mm -hmm. This was gonna be a development year. Then remember, Audi, uh, Audi, Peugeot bailed. I remember this from Le Mans. Right, yeah. okay, so now Toyota has been fast. They finally won their race and their home country. This is the last race of the season, whatever. Is yeah. it, is it, I guess my question is, does WEC even matter anymore in America? Oh man, you know, it's so weird I, because right now, with the ALMS Grand Am thing happening, thing. Yeah. right? Exactly. I mean, they've never been able to attract a full prototype class thing in, in America. And that's, I, I think that's been a problem for us because we watch, when, when there's overlap, we'll watch Audi and we'll watch, um, you know, Toyota's never been there. Not, it's, not it's, yet. But, um, you know, uh, uh, it's Audi and, and then the uh, and then the non-diesels. Well, Peugeot also, right, but right. The, well, previously, but oh, now the non-diesel. Yeah, for example, like we were at Petit Le Mans. Yes. And it was not a WEC international race, whatever it was last year. Exactly. Had a big crowd. Mm -hmm. um, one of the gas engine Toyota Rebellion, not a Lola, not a Lotus, not a whatever, came and walked the field. Right. I mean, they won, they won the championship, they won the race. Uh, LMP cars from LMS were second and third, mm -hmm. but it was really never a contest. Well, but yeah, big crowd came to see the cars. Yeah, exactly. Well, like, well kind of what I'm saying is that uh, we don't get the best of the technology that they're using here. I don't think so either. So it, 
And I guess there is that economic reason that you've talked about on, on the show before. Um, but it's hard to really get into it when we're not getting the best of the racing. So Sebring is not going to be a WEC race, but Audi has always used that race to kind of test their product right. and their tech for Le Mans. And they said they're coming back to the LMS race in 13. Well, that's good. Well, and Sebring's rumor is Toyota behind it. So would you uh, go to Sebring? Yes. Well, I'm going to go to because, Sebring anyway. Okay. Well, because Sebring, first of all, you're right. I mean, Sebring is a great place to see all of these guys. Maybe, you know, uh, Peugeot obviously didn't go last year. Uh, they came privately. But they came privately, right. I think, right? It's all been a... It's, all been a it's a blur. Blur. But, um, but Sebring is a great place to watch a race just because of the physical issues with racing there. I mean, okay. the, the, it's not great track surface. It's... Um, it's kind of tough. It's it, sometimes it's it's the, the heat is uh, is uh, sort of affects the way the way cars are running. But other than that, it's a fantastic race to watch because of the interest in it. And the the thing about racing at that level is the more interest there is in the race by fans, the more interest there is obviously by by manufacturers and uh, uh, race teams. And then you get all of that great competition right there, and then you can. You know, it's a fun So maybe when we get later in the show, we're going to talk about Circuit of Americas again. Yeah. But just as a reminder, WEC is coming to America at Circuit of Americas next year. Yeah. So everything seems to be going there. And again, it's like, what, what, what do you watch? Well, go yeah. ahead. Oh, no, I was going to say the, the um, Circuit of the Americas thing, I'm glad we're going to be talking about that in a bit because I feel like that's going to become, to much to the chagrin of a lot of the other tracks in the country, yeah. the focus of American racing. Uh, American road racing. When we get to DTM, yes. this is going to come up. Exactly. Okay. Uh, there's probably a picture of a Corvette we got next, and the only reason I'm mentioning this is this is the private Labra team, if I pronounced it right. It's an ex Pratt and Miller car from America Le Mans. Of all the championships left that are undecided, GTE Am is left. These guys are in the lead. So here's a little American technology making a mark internationally, but it's a private team. So that's about yeah. it. Everything else has been set, good to go. I'm going to move on. Let's talk DTM. Cool. This car is brand new for this year. Yes. This car won the championship. Surprisingly, now here's the big surprise, right? What, what, yeah, 20 years away, BMW shows up in DTM. Yep. 20 years later, in their first year, they win the championship. Right. Uh, a Canadian, Bruno Spangler. Bruno Spangler. Who was in that, the who black was car. Who was in Mercedes for how long? Seven, oh God, I don't seven know. seasons? I don't this know. Is eighth season? Is that it? I, I think so. So he, he hopped over to BMW. Hopped over to BMW. Won great, four races. By the way, great driver. Never won... Really? I, uh, I don't think he won. He's never won a championship. I don't know this stuff. I have to look it up. Oh, okay. Go ahead. So, um, the, and, then, and then the last, uh, the Hockenheim ring, um, you know, we don't get to see these races. So we just catch them on, you know, part yeah. of, on YouTube. And maybe if we can, we can steal it off of, uh, off of the, the YouTubes, off the, uh, you know, the internets. The Gary, Gary Paffett, right? Yes. The Mercedes Mercedes guy. guy. And uh, Bruno Spengler, it was a fantastic battle um, at Hockenheim Ring, and and really, honestly, like this is this is above my pay grade at this point because DTM, again, we've talked about it before. It's not here yet, and we haven't we don't get to see it. So, to us, where you know in America, German cars are huge, right? They're yep. Uh, yep. they're enthusiast fodder left and right, but we don't get to see them race like like you do in Germany and the rest so of the So I don't mean to tease, hold that thought, because we all know that the elephant in the room on that comment is Grand Am was talking about bringing DTM to the country Yes. before the consolidation merger, but you're right, we've got all the European brands here. You know, BMW, Spengler didn't do it alone. He had to get that manufacturer's title, Dirk Werner, yep. Andy Prio, Martin Tomczyk, did I pronounce it right, Augusto Farfus, and our American Joey Hand, who mm -hmm. went over there to race. Yeah. Um, and the big thing about these DTM spec, it's the new chassis. They all work together to develop all the technology. Everything is different. Everything is the same, mm -hmm. except they all have their own engine, bespoke engine. Right. And they have their different drivers and different crew and, and aero bodywork. But all the technology underneath, all the hand crew tires, that's all spec. And that propagated this whole another announcement where DTM for 2014 teamed up with Japan Super GT, yes. the GT500 class, and they're going to share 57 pieces of technology, from the, the, the chassis to the diffuser, splitter, wing, all that aero stuff, transmission, suspension, ECU, and even the DTM-sized tires versus what they were running in, in Japan, mm -hmm. all to make 
a unified type GT road racing type car? I mean, I think what it's, you, uh, you know, I think um, consolidation economically makes a lot of sense because ultimately I don't know whether there is enough audience globally to make a case for all of these different incarnations of the same thing, right? Well, BMW is one of the companies uh, that's been running around the globe trying to get unified spec because they want to build basically one car and race it around the globe. Right. So Japan Super GT likes the idea of having the three German brands come over and compete in their mm -hmm. house. I'm sure the Japanese, Honda, Toyota, Nissan, are not against racing in DTM, and DTM is looking for that too. Sure. So that's one of the things. I mean, one of the sticking points was who was going to build the chassis. The German organization wanted to sell the chassis to Japan. Japan finally said, no, 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 we'll do it ourselves. And I think Dome, mm. the race car, chassis, carbon gurus are going are to do it versus import. And the engine is the little bit of the issue, because right now, 4 liter V8 in DTM, everyone has their own, Yeah. something like that. But but GT, Super GT, wanted to go to, is going to, a two-liter two liter turbo, turbo yeah, yeah. four right, right, with, right. with curves and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. So that may kind of morph into it. Yeah. And, uh, but the bottom line is they're trying to bring it together so everyone can race everywhere, which gets me to your comment about what could happen in America. Because yeah. the last time I spoke to the Grand Am people, the DTM thing was kind of on the back burner as they're merging and consolidating. Right. Um, their plan was to take the year-old cars and bring them over here and have their own separate series. Uh. Now they're talking about new rules for the new GT class out of ACO. Mm -hmm. These guys are running around the, the world pulling something together. So you had this idea. Well, I think that, you know, we were talking before what, what uh, we were going to bring up Austin, right? So yes. Austin being the focus <laughs> for Formula One, I think what would be cool, and I've heard rumblings and, and and by the way this isn't necessarily rumors maybe it's wishful thinking on the part of a lot of people in racing so we should uh, build automaker. momentum for this so build a, momentum okay. for this right exactly we, if we talk about it enough maybe it'll happen but <laughs> but a that's romney's plan exactly I'm but, sorry. <laughs> but a mega event at, in austin at some point where you you bring together you bring you bring dtm you bring super gt or whatever is it, it that's what it's called yeah, right super, super gt, GT. yep um and you bring uh, V8 supercars from Australia, and you do a awesome. mega, a mega event in America. Well, and and to that point, we're kind of getting close. I mean, it, it it has a lot of logic to what you said. ALMS and Grand Am are going to run a shared event at Road America mm -hmm. next year. They're yeah. not going to race in same race, two separate races, but they'll all be there. Uh, V8 supercars is coming to to Coda. Yeah. Uh, we saw World Touring Car, not yeah World Touring Car sure. at Sonoma. Um, Japan, the Super GTs came over one time, uh, one year in California, and uh, the crowd went nuts. Yeah. So why not bring everyone together and make this super, super? Th I'd rather see that than have us build our own DTM series. Well, yeah, I mean, think of it as Race of Palooza, right? Where you just, you know, you bring, you make a, because uh, this is what works here. I mean, people Motor bitch about, about the American market. What, what, what works here is big mega events where you get people you know, trekking yep. across the country to come and go see and then camp out for five days. Well, it's, it, you know, I, no one's done that in racing to the extent that it's done in music, but it is something that could absolutely work because race fans are everywhere and they may not, they, they need to have a place to focus. And do you think Americans would, would get comfortable with the idea of accepting it's not an American series, it's imported greatness, like watching World Cup? Well, don't forget, like here, every car maker, Every, whether it's, you know, every brand has its following. I mean, you right. go to Waterfest or H2O and, and look at the Volkswagen nuts in, at Ocean City or wherever they do it. And it's like, it's a giant event. It's giant. You, you know, BMW has events like that. I, you know. Do you think it would be bigger than the F1 race? Oh, that's oh. a good question. I wonder if it I would be. I think it might be. I think it'd be awesome. Yeah, I mean, you bring, you bring that kind of stuff over, and then, you, you know, because there is that Ford versus Holden, Ford versus GM yeah, yeah. battle, you know, that, that happens here, too. I, I mean, I know a lot of people who would get in their cars and road trip to Austin if there was a, ever a big global event like that. By the way, the next picture, is it what I think it is? Yeah. Oh, whoops. So here's V8 supercars. Here's yeah. a big coming together. Well, the, that's... The, 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 the sidebar snark here is... V8 Supercars had the Gold Coast 600. Mm -hmm. 
and a lot of imported drivers, a lot of not regular drivers, and a lot of them started the race. And apparently there's some magic and mystery to, to doing the standing starts. They had a big accident, uh -huh. and, and the series is saying now they may regulate that the guest drivers can't start the race because oh, they don't know what oops. to do. Right. But to that point, do I need to see American racers in the cars when they come over to America, or do I want to see the stars of the series? I want to see the stars of the series. I think you got to see the stars of the series. I, I mean, I think that's been an overstatement right? that Americans won't watch anyone but Americans. Um, I'm not just, even wearing American clothes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, it happens. I mean, NASCAR is a different world than this. Yeah. Um, there will be overlap, <laughs> but, you know, I, I, um, I think that, that, that NASCAR is its own. I mean, they need, to in, they need to increase their audience, too, because if they're not growing, they're, they're, they're shrinking. I mean, that's the way they <laughs> see it, I mean, honestly, yeah. in, in NASCAR. And they haven't been growing lately, and they need new audiences. So, you, you know... You, you think in a, as they change their car, you want to do a crossover with these guys? Uh, I think... I don't know how that might work, but I think that there's I would something argue, there. I would argue vehemently yeah. that one of the reasons NASCAR was looking at DTM and, and that chassis yeah. is to figure out, is that the next generation down the road of NASCAR and I mean, become more global? It's possible. Look, but I mean, I'm really reaching on that one. Maybe. I mean, he, just turn on the television. Every actor playing an American is Australian now. So, like, I mean, <laughs> yeah. it's, it, I could see it crossing right over. It's not so, a problem. So, speaking of crossover, the next picture should be, okay, so Lotus... <laughs> Uh, Always Lotus. Lotus. But if you look up on the windscreen, it says GX. Yeah. So here's the reason why this is here. While ALMS and, and Grand Am are going to merge, consolidate in 2014, mm -hmm. ALMS announced that they're going to have carryover spec classes. No mm -hmm. change for 13. Grand Am announces a new class for next year. Right. Is this the experimental yeah, listen to this. smaller car class? Yeah, and I'm going to probably lose my, my Grand Am membership, but here we go. Uh -oh. Okay, so yes, they announced a GX class for new technologies. Okay. But they just announced there are going to be 13 cars eligible next year for this new class they're launching next year. Okay. Which means the meetings for figuring out the consolidation of classes in 14 yeah. just got more complicated. But here's the punchline. In the press release, they're not talking about new tech necessarily anymore. They're talking about this is a class for technology that's currently not involved in Rolex. Oh, so new. <laughs> so Briggs so, and Stratton. So suddenly turbocharging is a big thing. Okay. okay, that sounds but that's okay. cutting edge. And Mazda has that Sky Active Turbo Diesel oh, yeah. that they want to race, which uh, maybe was the genesis of this whole thing. This makes a lot. And by the way, Genesis, I think. The, that's the, right. Good. You did very the joke. Good. Yeah, the right. Hyundai, so the here Hyundai the cars, Genesis. In here it. are the cars that are suddenly on the GX new technology class. Lotus Evora GX, mm -hmm. which they've been trying to get into Grand Am forever. Porsche Cayman. Mazda, like I said, with the Sky Active Diesel. Um, I'm going to uh, drift. 13 models, 12 manufacturers, continuing with Audi TT, BMW 1 Series, Chevy Cruze, okay. Ford Focus, four-door only, four -door? Hyundai Genesis, Subaru BRZ, Scion FRS, Nissan 370Z, or the Altima, and, <laughs> and the... And or the, <laughs> the, the 370Z, or the Altima. And the ever-racy like Volkswagen Eos. The, oh, the Is Eos. that the convertible? So the, the sorority... The sorority car. So specs, rules are being, quote, rules are being developed to allow for exploration of a wide variety of alternative technologies and alternative fuels. And this could include turbocharging engines and blah, blah, blah. But they haven't finalized these specs. So is Focus and Cruise World Touring Car wow. or Conti spec? And by the way, yeah. this is all going to launch at Daytona 2013. Oh. Who wants to be the guy in the DP going <laughs> through the banking Coming up on a... Coming up on a Ford Focus four-door. Or Chevy Cruze. Or she, <laughs> right. Matter of fact, I, I... You know, we did a sponsorship deal with Hertz, and they rent cruises. I think I've got a race car. There you go. Uh, uh, what do you think? Well, I don't want to be too much of a dick, but, like, I think that... I, I love... First of all, I love the idea. Like, viscerally, I just love the idea of more cars. More out race cars. More race cars. More types of race cars. More types of race cars, and bringing, like, a, 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 a lesser class into it. But you're right. There are DP cars that are going to be bearing down on these sort of, uh, I don't know what the spec is. So they're touring spec or, or is it going to be more like? Um, we don't know. But I, and I'm sure they're not going to be slow, slow, but they're going to be slower I mean, than the Volkswagen GT cars. I mean, Volkswagen EOS? Well, good they, luck Are they going to bring the top down? Like, uh, cool? on the, is it really like, a, when they, they actually said EOS? 
It said EOS, I swear to God. I didn't even know there was, are they still making the EOS? That's a I, as race cars, they're going to weld it. So like the probably. GT cars in Grand Am yeah. are about the speed of an ALMS G, Porsche GTC. Okay. Okay. They're not as fast as the, the ALMS GT E cars. So these things will probably be somewhere between a Conti Challenge speed and the GTs. Right. So it's, you know, it's just more heads up. And they're trying to bring more manufacturers in. And if you didn't yeah. say it, you certainly implied it. And I agree. This was all about Mazda looking for a place to race their Skyactiv well, diesel. And I'm all for the diesel. So that's I cool. mean, this feels, because Mazda's, Mazda's a big sponsor of all this stuff, right? They have a lot of influence. They have a lot of influence. Anyway. So oh, but, like no, but, they've been t but they've been talking about that Skyactiv diesel as being a racing technology. Their first press release about it was implying its racing potential. So I see this as them leading and, and everybody else saying, well, what can we shoehorn into this thing? Or Grand M saying, what can we shoehorn into the class to have a class? Well, yeah. What, I, I don't uh, know why they just didn't run it in GT, but here we are. Right. Well, it anyway. gives Nissan another in. It gives Subaru and Toyota an in. I can't. You know what? I, I know you guys will be commenting. But those are going to be pri I mean, those will mostly be privateer cars. I'm guessing. Some, you know, like in I, GT3, I don't which see is a class going away, yeah. quite frankly, with the new rules by 15. I, I don't see everyone building private cars. No. And I'm wondering if Grand Am is smarter than we are, and there are manufacturers looking to build things. You know, the manufacturer meeting uh, that ALMS Grand Am had in Manhattan, mm -hmm. uh, uh, the Ford guy was there very vocal. And the Toyota guys were there very vocal. Ah. So who knows? Well, I mean, I know Yost Capito went from Ford over to Volkswagen, Volkswagen now. So maybe the EOS racing program is one of Yost's thing. I, I, who knows? I mean, Yost is a great guy. And what do we got next to close this thing up? <laughs> oh. Oh, Formula One. To remind me they're going to India, here's uh, Force India. OK. So I, I, I don't know what else to say about F1 other than I know we're going to cover it on Monday, and most of the time, rather than is this rumor mill stuff? You well, want to talk no, about? no. But rather than predict what's going on, you know, it feels like it's better to watch the race. We know Vettel's hot again. Mm -hmm. We know Alonso still believes he has a shot, and we know Kimmy's out there doing Kimmy things, or Lewis Hamilton <laughs> doing Lewis Hamilton things. Doing Hamiltonians. Which there's Kimmy. I don't like the prediction thing, believe it or not. As much as I love to hear myself talk. I'd rather watch the race and digest what happened next. Yeah. I, I, you know, is Vettel, is Vettel going to take this thing to the end? Yeah. Is Alonso going to rise to the occasion? Is Kimi going to finally get a win? He, he, is the car good enough to do that? And going back, if we can, to, to Hamilton, you know, he's made his bed with Mercedes, and that may not be a bad thing, mm -hmm. but he had a tough race, was mechanical. He's, he's voiced that he's going to try to make up with Ron Dennis before he goes. <laughs> Well, that would be nice. Okay, I'd like to see him perform well before he leaves. Yeah. But there's another reason for showing this. I, I, yeah, and, and this is where... Here we go. And that's where my head is, too. So, 2014. Yep. Um, 2014 is going to be the new 1.6 liter V6. Right. Renault just launched their motor and announced it. Yep. Showed the specs and people are talking about it. Mercedes is now leaving McLaren as basically being a customer team. Yep. McLaren's not a customer team. That's not the no. way they're built. No, 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 no. And, of course, some person from Honda mm -hmm. voiced uh, an unofficial interest of wanting Honda to get back into the F1 business. Yep. Maybe not as a team the way they ran down that road, but as a supplier once again. I'll get to this picture in a minute. And, and they've got like $6 billion in profit now yep. to play with again. So obviously everyone jumped on the rumor train saying, well, it's got to be McLaren, Honda in the good old days. Of course. I mean, the interesting thing about this is that Honda's doing the two liter uh, turbo for Super GT. Right. So the obvious connection, you're going to say, well, if they can do that, if they can do that, then why not go back with McLaren? And the, the, the thing that I think is driving part of that is that I think a lot of us think that if you can only bring McLaren and Honda back together, that it would somehow bring Ayrton Senna back. <laughs> and you know what I mean? Like, it's kind of like that we're, it's the science fiction kind of Stephen King, you know, pet cemetery thing. And I don't mean to be, <laughs> wow. be you know what I mean? <laughs> wow. Like, I don't mean to be crass. You won't find this on any other F1 No, analysis. but I, I, I think that, I think a lot of the speculation on this is that we all wish that this were a converge, a planetary convergence that could bring Senna back. And I, I mean, this might, there might be legs here, yeah, but yeah. I think that we're talking about it a lot because of that connection. 
That's all I'm going to say. So, and, and, and I can't disagree with you. Did uh, I say Pet Cemetery? Yeah, you, did. Was, you I, did. I apologize profusely what? for no, that. No, no, that's, 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 that's fine. <laughs> I've done the let's dig up race car drivers joke a long time before. All right, sorry. So I think there's lots. It was a little, a little insensitive, but go ahead. Is it? I don't know. I, 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 feel, I feel bad now saying it, but it's, it's fine. It's are good. the Senate family, are they on the phone already? No, I, I, okay. they're, on the, <laughs> they're on the phone. And what are Valon Pros? No, my point is this. I, I, I think there's a lot of logic that speaks to this. Yeah. Um, you know, Honda, everyone talks about getting their mojo back. They're yep. kicking ass in MotoGP, but the cars are eh. And, uh, and they're doing more things in racing and, and, and engineering, again. And they've never really lost that. I mean, the engineering team can bring things to the board of directors, so yeah. maybe. Everyone, like I said earlier, McLaren is not going to be without a, without a manufacturer relationship. Right. You know, even though Center did that great Donington thing in a, in a customer Ford engine, and, yeah. and they had a Peugeot moment with these guys that was just a disaster. Yeah. It's logic. And McLaren, would they take a flyer on a, on a company like... Hyundai, who has no experience as a factory deal, yeah. would they go shopping more Germans? I mean, is Volkswagen out here? Oh, there you just one of those you, brands. You just segued into the next. Well, well I just so want to so say, so yeah. to, to the to finish that my point. Yep. It feels like Honda has way too much logic to fit the McLaren model of hitting the ground running and performing well. Yeah. However, Volkswagen is this elephant in the room, and they have all sorts of brands. I would ask you first to set mm. you up. Should. Yeah. Should Volkswagen, the parent brand, be the brand, or should Audi stop trying to finish kicking butt in, G, in, in, in ALMS, I'm sorry, in Lamar racing, yep. and finally move up? Or is there another Volkswagen brand that you say is F1 worthy? Wow, interesting. All right, so I just want to say one thing about Honda is that Honda has, has a lot of things that they've done on the bench that they don't right, right, sh right. ever show. So I think that they the, built they built whole F1 cars. Yeah, that they never we've never seen just to do the technical exercise. Right, just for the just for the brain the, the brain exercise of building it. So that so Honda's lot, not against doing that. It's a lot that like my scripts. <laughs> but anyway, so back to Volkswagen. So the the, the a lot of people uh, speculated that Volkswagen yep. was saying that it was coming to F1. And then they're saying no. And then they're backing it off and they're saying mm -hmm. no. Um, first thing is the Volkswagen can make a hell of a two liter. Yep. Uh, or 1. theoretically 1.6. 1. Or V6 to, or whatever. Or whatever, yeah. Um, uh, but in terms of brands racing, I mean, my theory, mm -hmm. and, and it may be just completely off, is that, you know, everybody's talking about Porsche coming back to for Formula, or coming to Formula One. Right, there's talk and, and about there's them talk hiring about all these XF1 people. Exactly. But right, I think right. that's to tune up their Le Mans program. Bentley. Bentley. Bentley is the Formula One brand. Oh God! Now, I didn't even think of this. Yeah. But here, so, but, but but here, you go first. So and if I'll Volkswagen or if Volkswagen were the Volkswagen Group were to make a big push toward Formula One, this is how I see it. Yeah. Bentley yeah. Formula One. Why? Because upscale brand. Because um, they do want that kind of yachting Formula One. You yeah, know, it's sort of, of foo -foo. Breitling watch, you know, sort of, yeah, you know what I mean? And I don't yeah. want to, not to disparage Formula Except One. Except for the crowds at Monza and the Red Bulls all over the, uh, the, the park. Well, there's You're that. You're right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's the, the VIPs and then there's the... Yeah, and I think Bentley's brand uh, could use the, the, uh, the extra boost from Formula One in that, in that realm. Then you never have to take uh, Porsche out of sports car racing. Porsche okay. basically owns sports car racing. Um, goes into LP, uh, a prototype one yep. class. Yep. So, so that's mm -hmm. its thing. And where does Audi go? Audi goes... Um, they stay there fighting Porsche? I think Audi stays because another thing that Volkswagen likes to do is pit its brands against each other internally for internal competition. So <coughs> Audi, and, Audi and Porsche go against each other. Um, so the only problem I got with what you just said okay. is Bentley showed that GT3 big sedan thing that just look like an aircraft carrier with a wing. And moose bouche, I, I say. That's an, Very a good. That's a little, uh, a little taste. Of okay, a and it's got a W12 engine. Mm -hmm. how, do you, how do you reconcile Bentley with a 1.6 liter V6? Um, or does it matter? Uh, I think that at that point, it's Volkswagen Group engine, Bentley constructor. So like Jaguar did a long time ago, really yes. running a Ford motor in it. And, uh, yeah. But then it's a Volkswagen. I don't know, but you're right. I mean, there, oh, no, there no, are. No. It's not, it's not airtight, but I I really feel the Bentley brand. So in that's F1. that's the ending question, I guess, to hang on the F1 thing while you watch the race. Yeah. Which brands do you think should partner up with McLaren, so we can dig up the body of Ayrton Senna and go racing again? <laughs> Jesus. 
I thought I was in trouble. <laughs> I did. <laughs> Just donate to his charity. Come on. Yeah. I got nothing. What else? And then, and then which, uh, what are the uh, Volkswagen brands, where are they going to be positioned in racing? Wow. I think you're right. Those are, I hope you like those questions. I wish Volkswagen was, was going to really do a rally uh, effort. They are. Mm. WRC. You know, I'm well, a little nervous about it. When did that happen? It. I don't know. They're hiring people. They I know they're the hiring. Oh, I believe it when I see it. Are you confusing them with Mini? No. 